In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how to keyframe one of the qualities of the special effect. Oftentimes we think of a special effect as on or off, but you can actually keyframe them. In this case, we'll be keyframing the parameter related to the mask. We'd like to show you an example of what we're about to do, and then we'll show you a bit about the technique we applied. What I've done so far is I've taken my video of the ocean waves and placed it on track number one. And then I have a music track that I put on track number three. Now you notice I have three beat markers. I have gone into my music already. I'll right click on that. And then I've gone to, into the option that says use automatic beat detection. And I've placed three beats where the certain kind of trumpet sound is repeated. And so we'll be using that in a moment. But I have the audio and I have the video. I have some beat markers. Let's do some effect work on my video track. I'm going to actually apply two effects in different ways. So I'm going to go to my effect room. I can press the F4 key or go to FX on my left side. And instead of all content, I'll simply go to my color LUTs to start with. And then in my color LUT controls, I'm going to pick the landscape HDR cold and put that on the entire track and so we get this cold bluish look here now what I want to do is use another effect I could also drag it to the track but in this case I'd like to apply it simply to an effects area in my timeline I think I have more control that I want I'm going to change the category and go to my style effects from the drop down and I'll take my blur now instead of putting it on the track, I'm going to give it its own track here and give it a duration just after the second and third beat markers. Now I have a blur that will apply to that duration of my video clip. I'd like to change that. So with it highlighted, I'm going to click on the keyframe option. That will open up my keyframe controls and we'll widen it. And I'm going to take my playhead and move it back to the very beginning. I want the blur to be full screen. So we have a mask quality, a mask parameter, and I can choose either between box or circle. We'll leave it at box. And so I'm going to click a diamond and set a keyframe here right to the right of mask. You know that by default I've got one already. I'm going to click on mask and you can see it is indeed full screen. That's fine. I'll leave it there. Now I want to go to the first beat marker where the trumpet sounds and that will automatically move my playhead in my keyframe controls. That's a nice feature. So I'm going to set another keyframe there. I'll click on mask and we're not changing the type of mask. Make sure I have it also keyframed in the first frame. And now we're going to go to the next one and I'll set another keyframe in the mask control. And I'll go to my last one and we'll set another keyframe. So at each of these points, I want to change the size of the mask. So what I'm going to do is go to the first place where we're going to make a change. And I'll move back and forth by using the left or right triangles get exactly on top of the mask. Now I'm going to click on the mask button. And now let's say we're going to go up, oh, maybe a third of the screen. I'll click on OK. We'll go to the next one. Click on the mask button. And in this case, we're going to go up another third. And we'll click on the, the last one. Click on the mask button. And now we'll go up almost to the top. So we've changed the size of the mask. And then right after that, we're going to have the mask quit. So I'm going to actually shorten the, uh, the length of this. Now, the problem that I have now is I want it to go up in segments. Right now, it will go up slowly. So if I play this from the beginning, Uh -huh. 
you don't see that that change that I'm looking for. So what I'm going to do is enlarge my timeline. We'll actually give ourselves a little more room to work with here. Enlarge the timeline to, until I get to frames. And then I'm going to click, go back a frame and set another keyframe. And I'll right click on it and I'll say duplicate previous keyframe. That will mean this will be unchanged and it'll snap right there in the length of a frame. So I go to the next one where I have that change in the music. Go back a frame, set a keyframe, and right click on it and do duplicate previous keyframe. Again, that leaves this stable between these. And we'll do that one more time. Right click, we'll set a keyframe, and we'll make sure we duplicate the previous keyframe. So now it will go up somewhat in a jerky fashion, but that's what I'm looking for in this particular case. Uh, I want the music to kind of trigger that in the mind of the viewer. And so let's see what this looks like when we go back to the beginning and now play this. Okay, so now you begin to see what we're looking at in terms of the, the progression. And all we've done is keyframed one of the parameters of our special effect. Now, in this case, I wish there was a, a, a chance in the process to take that, that blur and make that blur soften a little bit as it jumps. But in this case, we don't have that option in this particular control. But if you're using masks, don't be afraid to get into some of the keyframe controls. There's some interesting things that you can do as you apply keyframes to mask parameters.